Okay, the cap and back. This is the famous TE2 bumpy cap and back. These uh, these small bubbles and imperfections in the mold are what gives this helmet its distinguishing look, and I love it. Um, there's a lot of theories as to how these bumps came about, but uh, uh, I'm not going to get into that here. Um, I will say that this is a little bit of mold damage here, and uh, Guns has done his best to try and repair that. Um, it's still a little evident, but I think it looks a lot better than it did. Also, the front here was really heavily damaged uh, a little while back, and uh, Guns has fixed that as well. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to, moving right along here, I'm going to go into the house and look at some reference pictures of the uh, move along helmet. I'm going to see just how far down this cut comes on the helmet. If you notice the ear, the original lines of the helmet, of this helmet, this is the Brian R helmet, the original lines that were cut are right about here. When it gets to about right here, everything's all chunky in there and it's really hard to distinguish where this line ends. But I think it ends right about here. Every time I put a helmet together, it wants to go together right about there, which leaves a nice gap. And if you look at the Brian R helmet, that's uh, that's about what it is. There's a nice about a half inch gap from where it probably should be to where the Brian R is actually cut. Um, but I'm going to go in and look at the, uh, the helmet real quick, the move along helmet. Here's our trap, trapezoid. I'm going to see just where his is cut out, and I'll be right back.